What's up, everyone? I'm so excited to share with you our finished home theater. When we purchased this home a year and a half ago, this was part of an oversized garage that was all unfinished, and we wanted to add value to the home, so we decided to convert this into living space with an attached bathroom and also a separate exterior entrance. My husband has always wanted a dedicated home theater, so we actually designed this space with both purposes in mind. In an ideal world, a home theater wouldn't need an attached bathroom or a separate exterior entrance, but we kind of compromised slightly to make this space meet both of our needs. If you are interested in seeing the before and after of the rest of our home renovation, check out this video. When we moved into this home a few months back, this home theater was not finished yet because my husband, as a home theater enthusiast, wanted to do a lot of the work slowly himself as he's very particular about the details. So after months of hard work, this theater is finally ready to be showcased and I'm going to share with you all the details on the work that we did on this home theater today. Because we designed the room to be permitted as an additional bedroom, we had a big window put in the front wall of the theater where the screen will eventually go. So we had to cover the window first. To do this, we mimic the wall construction such that the sound isolating characteristics were the same as the rest of the room. To start, we added 2x4 framing in the windowsill to provide support for drywall and to provide stud bay cavities where we installed Raku insulation. Just like the rest of the room, we then added green glue and another layer of drywall on top of the first layer of drywall. Lastly, we added a layer of quarter-inch mass-loaded vinyl to further reduce sound transmission through the window cavity. The projector box was designed and built to leverage a recessed portion of the ceiling that we framed in during the initial construction of the room. We started building the entire tray ceiling at the back of the room where the projector box is to ensure everything would fit inside the projector box and then determine the rest of the tray ceiling heights from there. The bottom of the projector box has a hinged access panel to allow access, installation, and service to the projector. The tray ceiling was constructed with 2x framing and MDF to allow us to create the recess where the uplights are installed, and also to allow us to frame in and conceal the projector in the back of the room. We both glued and screwed the MDF and used furniture assembly techniques to finish all of the edges and seams before painting the ceiling and soffit flat trichrome black. We installed a soffit as a design feature to frame the room and also to provide perimeter downlighting and conceal the colored ambient uplighting. The 4-inch recess lights we used are divided into three zones, the front zone, side zone, and the back zone, and all the lights are Wi-Fi controlled. The uplights in the tray ceiling are individually addressable and Wi-Fi controlled RGB LEDs. They use a Govi controller and a custom power supply and control signal extender to allow us to have them fully surround the entire room inside the recess tray. The Wi-Fi controller has a built-in mic which allows it to sync the lights to the music playing in the room. The controller can also be used with various home assistants like Google Home and Alexa. Before I show you more of this home theater, smash the like button below and subscribe to the channel so you can see more home renovation tips. The projector is mounted in a sealed and ventilated box that's integrated in the soffit. In the front of the box, 
we 3D printed a custom frame to hold a piece of optically clear glass to allow us to isolate the projector sound and the fan sound from the rest of the room. We have a hinged panel underneath the box to allow us to service the projector easily. We chose to build a baffle wall over the window to allow us to hide the speakers and subwoofers as well as create a structure to mount the screen and to be used as a large base trap. The baffle wall structure was built with 2x4 and 2x6 lumber. The baffle wall also includes sealed stud bay cavities to duplicate wall cavity for the center, left and right in-wall speakers. Pink fiberglass insulation was used behind and within the wooden structure as the base trap filling. The left and right speaker enclosures were built within the baffle wall such that they can be towed in pointing closer to the center listening position. Finally, we add the same two layers of drywall with green glue in between to keep the baffle wall rigid and prevent it from resonating and acting like a giant speaker itself. We painted the entire baffle wall black to help reduce reflections behind the acoustically transparent screen. On the face of the baffle wall, we then installed a thinner version of the absorbent acoustical panels that were installed throughout the rest of the room. At the edges of the baffle wall, we then installed fabric track on the walls, ceiling, and floor to allow another layer of acoustically transparent cosmetic fabric to be stretched into the track, which allows us to hide the wall entirely with a clean and consistent look. Before stretching the fabric, we built two small stood off wooden support features to support the screen frame and French cleat mounting system. The fabric was then stretched into the track and trimmed at the edges. Once completed, the fabric track blends into the edge and hides the excess fabric inside of it. The screen was then installed onto the cleats to finish off the front of the room. This hybrid baffle wall looks solid, but it's actually a piece of fabric that's also acoustically transparent and is stretched onto a perimeter fabric track. This giant 150 inch screen is mounted on the hybrid baffle wall that my husband built. There are three speakers mounted in the wall behind the screen, the center channel, the left channel, and the right channel. And at the bottom, there is a cavity where there are two big subwoofers. And this screen is ac acoustically transparent, so the sound from the speaker can be heard. The screen assembly was straightforward. The screen frame slotted together, the screen material was then stretched across the screen and was attached with included fasteners. This screen is 150 inches diagonal and 130 inches wide. It's 16 by 9 aspect ratio with a motorized masking system. So if you are watching a movie that's 2.35 by 1 or cinema scope, the masks can hide the gray areas on top and bottom. And when the lights are off, you wouldn't see the bars on top or bottom at all. There are 11 main speakers and 8 subwoofers in this room. So the configuration is 7.5.4, 7 base channels, 5 subwoofer channels feeding into 8 subwoofers, and 4 in-ceiling Dolby Atmos speakers. Installing the speakers was relatively easy as we had installed speaker roughing kits during the framing and before drywall which meant we only needed to clean out the speaker locations and trim the drywall slightly to ensure each speaker would slide in smoothly. The speakers themselves are made by KEF and are designed for in-wall installations such as this. Because the room had already been painted, we carefully taped the cutout and were very careful during installation to avoid scratching or dinging the wall or the speakers themselves. 
We also pre-ran the speaker wire during framing and needed to simply trim and strip the wire before connecting them to the speaker. The speakers attach to the wall with a series of screws that pull on a bar on each side of the speaker, compressing the front face of the speaker to the wall and creating a tight seal. The last step of the speaker installation was connecting the wire and inserting it into the hole and carefully and evenly tightening the screws while confirming the speaker was level and plumb. We built a three-tier riser for the back seats. It has two traditional seven-inch steps and an additional platform so the back seats can see above the top of the front row in any position without obstruction. The rear seat riser structure was built with 2x6, 2x8s, and 2x10s. We chose to build the riser as a standalone assembly to allow us to move it forwards or backwards in the room to achieve the perfect seating viewing distance. The platform and steps on the riser were made from two layers of 3 quarter inch plywood with construction adhesive between the structure and first layer and then green glue once again between layers. The cutouts in the front and rear are vents to allow the riser to act as a giant base trap, similar to the cutouts on the top and bottom of the baffle wall. The entire underside of the riser was built as one continuous cavity and was once again filled with pink fiberglass insulation before it was moved back into the room after carpeting. The finished riser weighed over 400 pounds and required some interesting Egyptian moving techniques to get it into the room. We also installed a plush carpet and a dense pad as part of a broader acoustic treatment plan. We had our local carpet place install the carpet and pad in the room and on the riser. We chose a dark and plush carpet and a dense pad to help further improve image quality and acoustics within the room. We also carpeted the riser separately from the floor so that we could move it forward or back or even remove it in the future. One of the easiest and most rewarding parts of the theater build was the seat installation. The two rows of three seats simply needed to be dropped in place, plugged in, and were good to go. These recliners are motorized. It has lighted cup holders and armrest storage. These alien-looking funky panels you see all over the walls and the ceiling are acoustic treatments. Most people don't pay enough attention to them, but they can actually drastically improve sound quality. These panels are for sound diffusion and these are for sound absorption. A mixture of both of them, when designed properly in a room, can get rid of harsh reflections and echoes, help surround sound positioning, and make a room feel much larger than it is. It's actually not uncommon for acoustic treatments and designs to cost nearly as much as the speakers. We solicited help from professionals who designed and calculated the specific location, type, and placement for the acoustical treatment. The installation took quite a while because it required some amount of precision to look and function right when all was said and done. At the entrance of the theater, we set up a digital movie poster that runs on a small LCD TV. It showcases various featured and upcoming movie posters and can also show you the currently playing movie poster title, duration, and status. Outside of the home theater in the conditioned garage, we have this equipment rack that houses all the home networking gear and all the audio and video equipment that support the home theater. This is a render video to show you the entire process of the theater construction.
Here is how it looks when we play a movie in the theater. We use the Kaleidoscape system to browse and play movies. When you select a movie, the screen will rearrange to show similar titles. Based on the movie we choose, the screen can automatically mask the top and bottom to get to the correct aspect ratio. Now that we have a newborn, we really enjoy the home theater as we can crank up the volume without having to worry about waking up the baby. If you have any questions regarding the theater construction, drop a comment below and I'll get my husband to respond to it because he's actually the architect behind this theater. If you enjoyed this episode, smash the like button below and subscribe to the channel to see more home renovation tips. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.